Mr. President, uh, members and delegates that are here today, it's, uh, it is a privilege for me to stand here before you today and, and really I think in this uh, opening session to welcome you here. As was said, uh, we are two days away from uh, an election in our country uh, and again, as was said, celebrating 20 years of democracy. Uh, invariably, I would be out on the road at the moment, uh, probably with a t-shirt on and not a tie, but uh, it's actually pretty good to be here as well. You know, I, you, have to, you have to continue on with your job until it either gets given back to you again by the voters or, uh, you know, you have to hand over the baton to somebody else. And uh, when I get invited to these kind of sessions, uh, the default in my office is always say yes. And uh, I'm, very, I'm very glad to be here specifically for this, uh, this uh, uh, conference because, as I will tell you in a few minutes, it's actually something that's very close to my heart personally uh, because of an own personal journey. And uh, that's got nothing to do with... Uh, any of the supply chains, any of the value chain or agriculture or any other part that the pulses play and that, that you play in this space. But uh, I want to first of all say thank you very much for choosing Cape Town and South Africa for having this conference. Uh, I want to say to you that uh, I, I'd, I'd like to say a very warm welcome. I, I must apologize that it uh, is not sun shining outside for the last day or so that uh, the first rains of our winter have actually started, but uh, a very, very warm welcome to Cape Town and to South Africa for hosting it here. Thank you very much. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about um, our economy and this region because that's what I know and uh, I'm pretty certain many of you would like to know a little bit about it. Um, but I'm also gonna tell you about one of the risks and I presume that many of you here are for the first time in Cape Town and the first time in Africa. And I wanna to say to you, those of you that are here for the first time, there's a risk in coming to Cape Town. There's a risk in coming to Africa because uh, once your foot touches the African soil, you've got a chance of a little bit of that dust, that African dust getting uh, blown up. And what happens is when African dust touches your skin, it actually gets under your skin. And once it gets under your skin, there's only one antidote, there's no, uh, there's no medicine that can actually uh, uh, take that out of your system. It is in your system, and there's only one form of relief, and that is to return to Africa time and again, because uh, that's what happens once Africa does get under your skin. And those of you that have been here many times will know exactly what I'm talking about. And so that, uh, my, po my uh, portfolio, that talks to the, so the one of the spaces in my portfolio, which is tourism. And uh, we are very, very proud of, uh, of this space being Cape Town, this part of Africa, this part of South Africa, on the tourism context. Uh, we grow uh, tremendously year on year. We are becoming more and more of a favored destination. And just in this year uh, alone, we've, uh, we've won out of the US, the New York Times, uh, a survey of the top 51 destinations in the world. Cape Town came up as number one of 51 destinations. Uh, the Guardian out of, uh, out of the UK ran, ran uh, 40 bucket list destinations around the world and Cape Town again came up as number one. Uh, when it comes to us ourselves uh, on TripAdvisor, all, the, all of the awards that are available to our airport, we, we keep on winning the best airport in Africa uh, year after year. And uh, all of this is really driven primarily on the back of tourism, a key part of our economy in this region. And uh, so in that space, uh, also business tourism, and in this very conference center that we are sitting, uh, we've just come through five years uh, of global recession, and this is one of the very few conference centers in the world that has still run at a profit through these, uh, these recessionary times, so much so that uh, our government is investing in doubling the size, and so if you come back in three years' time, uh, we will be have a, have a convention center double the size of what it is at the moment. So that's in the tourism space, talking about uh, the dust and talking about the space. And I do certainly hope that uh, those of you that are here, I have spoken to one or two who have already had the opportunity of being here a few days early, that you've sampled what we have on offer 
that you are happy with the value, that you are happy with, uh, with what you have sampled. I look uh, forward to hearing from some of you that have uh, said to me you're extending your stay by a few days, hopefully not only uh, in the in this space called Cape Town, but also get out into our wine lands, get out into some more of our, of our rural areas, um, but, uh, and mainly to do that uh, so that you do make sure that you get some of that dust under your skin so that we see you back again. But then let me also talk about the economy of this region. And uh, when I have the opportunity to talk about our economy, I first have to say to many of you, because you're all in business, you're all looking at the supply chain, you're all looking at the, at the uh, investment space and business opportunity around the world. And as you've heard from the presentations, if you look at where your specific market demand is and where that growth is, um, uh, and, and specifically looking at some of the numbers out of uh, China and India that we've just seen. But also, I must tell you that looking forward, Africa is also going to become a major player. At the moment, we're seeing how the world is looking at Africa very, very differently. But let me start with South Africa. And uh, of course, you need to boast with some of the, the ratings. And I'm not sure if any of you follow the, the World Economic Forum risk ratings. But if you have a look at some of South Africa's risk ratings, uh, you can have a look at some of, the, some of the really bad ones, which are where we as, as government have to exercise our minds. You heard that uh, I'm involved in the AIDS Council. You will know that HIV AIDS is a big issue for South Africa. You will know that education is a big issue for South Africa. You will know that uh, we might be celebrating 20 years of democracy, but uh, even 20 years into our democracy, we still have so many people in our country who uh, sit in the poverty space. Uh, we have many, many demands on us as government. So we look at those World Economic Forum risk ratings, and that tells us what our homework is, what we've got to be doing, how we've got to be changing society right here in our region. But from an investor's point of view, from a business partner's point of view, from somebody looking at this region to do business, not only in South Africa, but up into Africa, they are the other side of the spectrum, the stuff that we do really well. And uh, if you have a look at that, and I ask you to go and have a look at it, go and have a look. We've just come through a recession, a global recession. When we started that recession six years ago in, our, in, the, in the world, uh, our banks, our financial institutions in our country were rated as number six in the world. In other words, the risk rating uh, was the sixth best in the world. During the recession, we moved up to two, and right now we're number three. Our banks are the third best on the risk rating across the whole planet. If you look at uh, the availability of financial services in our country, we rate it as number two in the world. Financing through equity, uh, equity markets, we rate it as number two in the world. But then if you look at our auditing and reporting standards, we rate it as number one in the world. Our corporate boards, the standards of our corporate boards, number one in the world. Uh, in the world. If you look at uh, our, our legal rights index, we're number one in the world. Uh, if you look at our securities exchanges, we're number one in the world. Um, so we have a number of ratings where this country sitting at the bottom tip of Africa have got some outstanding ratings. And uh, I want to use those in, uh, in this uh, discussion to say to you, if you're not already involved in business in this region, please think of us as a region that you can get involved in business. Uh, we, we do have some unbelievable uh, ratings that, uh, that put us into a position that uh, uh, is, uh, is the great space to look at Africa from. We might be at the bottom tip, but, at the, but from this bottom part of Africa, we see lots of opportunity up into Africa, and I think specifically in your line of business and looking at supply going forward and looking at how Africa has changed over the last 20 years and the position of where Africa is going to be in the next 20 years, I think uh, with regard to pulses and your industry that we have a major role to play. Not only the one billion people who are going to be living on this continent in the next couple of years, uh, the, the growth uh, out of poverty in this, in this continent. Uh, South Africa has always enjoyed the position of the top or the biggest economy in Africa. And you will have seen that Nigeria actually just surpassed us uh, a couple of weeks ago as a bigger economy than the South African economy. Of the seven fastest or of the ten fastest growing economies in the world, seven are in Africa. So that's why Africa is being looked at very differently. And I think from your industry point of view, you also need to look at Africa very differently from a market point of view, but also from a production point of view. And perhaps that's when I must get to the point that I raised that uh, I think uh, it's really exciting that the United Nations have declared 2016 the International Year of Pulses. 
I think that uh, the discussion that needs to be taken place, and obviously you're going to be having these discussions over the next few days, uh, is really the role that pulses need to play um, in the world going forward. I myself am a diabetic, and I have uh, been diagnosed as a diabetic five years ago. And uh, as we stand here today, I do not take one, uh, or I do not take any medical uh, uh, or medicine for my diabetes. I control it absolutely through exercise and diet. And uh, the points that were made on, on how the world is consuming food, we really need uh, to be playing, uh, and this industry needs to be playing a much more prominent role in how we change uh, diets across the world. Uh, and especially if I come back to Africa and I come back to South Africa and the region that I'm responsible for, the Western Cape, one of the biggest problems that sits right high up on our dashboard is, uh, is obesity, is the lifestyle diseases that we are, are saddled with. And uh, we do believe, uh, even so, so much so, that uh, we are, are looking at changing our Department of Health to the Department of Wellness. And we've really got to start focusing on the wellness of society and how we start changing how we as, uh, as people within the society uh, manage our diets specifically. The kind of, uh, of uh, low-cost production foods um, and what they are doing uh, to our societies, specifically poorer societies, and the role that specifically pulses can play over the next while uh, in this space. Uh, those of you that do come from this region will know that uh, there is a Professor Tim Noakes who uh, uh, very much pushing the sports science side. He, he uh, runs the, the Sports Science Institute here. In, uh, in Cape Town, linked to the UCT, uh, and how um, he is very much uh, looking at how we control uh, various diseases through diets. And uh, I would uh, very much like to, as our discussion that we had earlier, how do we involve uh, some of our universities, some of our uh, uh, specialists in this kind of discussion, and also looking at, uh, at uh, 2016, and the role that uh, perhaps we can play from this region going into 2016. I think I must also say that uh, agriculture and agri-processing play a very important role in our economy. Uh, I've been in this job uh, in, uh, in, the, uh, in the environment of the economy uh, of this region, uh, whether it's from the finance side or the economic development and tourism side or agriculture side, and agriculture plays a very, very prominent role in this region's economy. Uh, it does have certain threats, and I know that you have over time been looking at how global warming is going to have a threat on your specific industry. We have exactly those same threats right here in this part of our country, um, and global warming is playing a major role, but we have to embrace that. We have to understand what it's going to be doing to our specific agricultural production. And again, talk to you about uh, the role that uh, your industry plays uh, not only for this region, bearing those, uh, those kind of factors in mind, but again, bearing what's going to happen in Africa over the next while. I can tell you in the last five years, uh, when I first got into this position, exports, agricultural exports primarily, into Africa from our market was almost negligible. And it is now one in four containers move into the African economy. We, are pre we were predominantly reliant on the EU and, the, and, and Europe, um, but obviously bearing in mind that we have to spread our risk as well as a, as a region, uh, we've been divesting as, as quickly as possible into new markets, looking at new markets, and especially in the agriculture and the agri-processing space, uh, moving into Africa. And we also believe that there's huge opportunity uh, in that space too. I, uh, I want to say uh, normally um, at this stage what I would be doing in any meeting like this is I would be moving to uh, questions and answers but I don't think I'm going to do this in the, in the size of, and volume of this hall. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do that. But what I am doing, going to do is, uh, is make sure that over the next few days that uh, specifically my department uh, is uh, cognizant of what the kind of discussions you are having. I was looking at your program and what you're going to be talking about over the next few days. And uh, I really do believe that it, uh, that it is something that we as a government need to take very, very seriously. Uh, uh, in, we need to take a, a very close uh, uh, notice of uh, because we need to say to you what role do we need to play as a government in a region. Uh, you would be business coming together talking about that full value chain uh, and supply chain within your, your uh, business space. But what role does government play? And uh, I think that's the last point that I want to talk to you about. Um, I, uh, I've started a process in, and, under my watch uh, called Red Tape to Red Carpet 
And uh, I've just told you about how we're expanding markets up into Africa. I can tell you that it's not easy. It's not easy within our own regulatory environment right here in South Africa, right here in the Western Cape. Uh, we have lots and lots of red tape that sit uh, in our way of growing our economy, of making changes here for our people in this region. Um, but also I would imagine that there's lots of uh, red tape and regulation that gets in the way of your specific industry. And uh, if it pertains to this province, this country, or this continent, if there are issues around red tape that need to be looked at, I would very much like to be uh, told about what those issues are, and if there's in any way that I, using my government hat and using our departments, we're both whether they be local, regional, or national departments within the, the context of our country or in the context of Africa, we need to also have those kind of discussions because red tape and regulation do definitely uh, get in the way of economies. And uh, as I said, it's called red tape to red carpet. Um, my details will be with your, with your uh, organization. Um, I would very, very much like to get involved in that space. Um, if I say to myself uh, uh, at the end of my term, that is probably the one, one area that I would like to have been known for as someone who's managed to remove the, the bureaucratic blockages uh, in the economy and uh, in whichever way that they are influencing your organization. But with those words, once again, I want to say to you, thank you very, very much for choosing Cape Town and South Africa as the space to have this conference. I look, uh, I want to wish you all the very best in your deliberations and your discussions over the next few days. Uh, and uh, I look forward to uh, seeing what happens uh, between now and 2016 and how you start influencing um, the food production space and uh, specifically the healthy side of food production uh, in uh, this country, in this continent, and on this planet. Thank you very much.